While Austin Matthews plays on the default controller in visual settings, Patrick Laine, he knows the best settings and camera angles. So in this video, we're gonna go over the best settings to use. I'm gonna tell you guys what I use, I'm gonna tell you why I use it, and then after, I'm gonna show you what everything does. Sound good? No? Well, too bad, you don't have a choice. Set text out of the video or fast forward or whatever. So settings can make a big difference in the game. They can change how you play and what you see. This first setting is called Auto Zoom, which I have set to Auto. The reason why I have it set to auto is because I was testing out some of the other camera angles. I played a few games with this off and a few games with this auto and I noticed that there were times when I would be at the very top of the screen and the camera wouldn't do anything. I couldn't see ahead of me. I found that auto fixed that issue so that's why I choose to turn it on now. For the camera angle, I went with zone. It zoomed out far enough and angled just right so that you can see most of the ice or as the name applies, allows you to see the zone that you're in. Camera perspective at prefer up means you'll always be playing and skating going upward. It creates consistency. Name indicator is on. I always wanna see who I'm playing against, who my opponent's using. Indicator size, medium, no preference there. Fighting instructions on, don't care. Goalie cameras, fine, however. Puck highlight and puck size, I want those to be as large as possible so that I don't lose sight of the puck easily. Score clock overlay is authentic, don't care too much, but in previous NHL games, you probably wanted it to be small just that it didn't take up so much of your screen. Shootout camera, don't care too much about that, it's dynamic low by default. The secret sauce is in the audio settings. If you put in the right numbers here, it's like a cheat code. Your players start playing better. I want to hear when the announcer screams goal. I want to hear the crowd go wild. No, these don't, don't matter at all. If it's too loud, just turn it down. Like, I don't, I don't know what you want me to tell you. The more important stuff is here in the controller settings. I use the skill stick. The skill stick gives you access to the most tools for playing the game, so you should absolutely learn to use the skill stick because otherwise you're missing out on something such as the defensive skill stick, which is pivotal to playing defense. This next one is also really important. Auto backskate is turned off. When the opponent has the puck entering your zone, with this turned on, your players will automatically turn around. Sounds like a good thing, except for those times where your opponent, all he's thinking is to go full speed ahead and burns right through your players. This turned off means you'll be able to maintain your speed and stay with them in playing defense. If you ever want to turn around on your own, all you have to do is press the L2 or LT button while skating around. Shooting controls don't matter a whole lot. It's really only if you're playing like offline with your friends and you have to go downward instead of upward. The other setting to this would mean that even though you're going downward, you're gonna aim as if you're going upward, which is kind of funky. Vibration off, I really don't want my controller freaking out every time I get hit. And finally, another big one is the online pass assist percentage. There's an offline slider equivalent to this in the gameplay slider section if you really care about that. Ask yourself, how many times do I get rid of the puck with the pass button and I don't intend to get it to a certain player? If the answer is all the time, you want this at zero. But what this slider tries to do is it tries to magnetize your passes. If it's set to zero, wherever you aim on the left stick for your passes, that's where the puck will go. Sounds like a good thing, except you have to be incredibly precise. On the opposite end, when it's closer to 100, it'll try to get your puck to a player except it may not be the player that you intended. That's why I like to keep this pass assist percentage pretty high. However, the right way of going about this is start somewhere in the middle and get a feel for how your passes are. If they're going nowhere, tune up the slider a few points. If they're going to the wrong people, tune down the slider a little bit. A lot of people find success at about 60 to 70%. I tend to enjoy the higher pass assist percentages. Keep in mind, as your players get better passing ratings, you probably want to tone this down a little bit. Now, when I said finally, I meant there's one more setting that I've turned on. In the on ice trainer, I have offside warning turned on. Okay, I know what an offside is, but what this setting does is it tells me when my players are offside when I'm not really looking if they've crossed the line. It allows me to wait that extra second or two to make sure that they have crossed back into the neutral zone before I continue. For newer players, you'll probably wanna have this on ice trainer mostly turned on. All right, now let's talk about each setting, starting with the accessibility settings, which actually are pretty cool. They added a section for color blindness. 
The first one, Tritonopia, makes you kind of feel like you're in Candyland. But at the same time, if you're not colorblind, it kind of feels like you're gonna be colorblind by playing on this setting. I don't know if that's how contagious colorblindness is. After this, we have colorblindness for the Green Week. I've determined that this is for fans of the Dallas Stars and the Minnesota Wild, whose fans show up in different jersey colors because they're just tired of supporting those teams. This game against the Dallas Stars at home proves my point. Everyone's just wearing Anaheim Ducks jerseys. Even the team is wearing Anaheim Ducks jerseys. That's just, that's just completely uncalled for. Red Week means you don't want to see any blood. That's understandable. Game is ready to eat for everyone after all. But no, seriously though, these settings aren't for us. They're for the people that actually are colorblind, and I'm sure they make a big difference for them. So props to EA for having inclusive settings like those. Up next, if you're having trouble figuring out which player you're using, like my girlfriend, this player indicator size is for you. You'll never complain about knowing who you're using ever again. Okay, okay, I had my fun. It actually looks like this about the size of a player. You can also have it turned off if you so choose, wouldn't recommend it. But if you want to make it look like you're watching the game instead of playing it, well, here's your opportunity. You can take it to the next level by turning off the name indicator, and at that point, you don't know who you're controlling unless you have the puck. Though honestly, this makes for a great time if you and your friend are both playing on the same settings. Finally, on the same note, the player indicator size being extra small kind of just looks like classic NHL where there's just a little arrow over your head. Reminds me of like NHL 2000 when I was like playing it on the PC. Hashtag bring back PC Chell, which at that time wasn't even called Chell. Hashtag bring back PC NHL. Next, we have puck size authentic or the smallest one. Doesn't make a difference when the ref is holding onto the puck in his hand, but it's just a little dot on the ice. With the shadow, it makes it much easier to see. Now, if we remove the shadow, the highlight, and make the puck size large, well, it doesn't look any bigger, and it's pretty hard to keep track of. Again, if you want that realistic experience, you don't go for the puck highlight. But if you're actually playing the game, you'll be wondering, where the heck is the puck? Next, let's talk about the camera, starting with overhead. Does this camera make the ice look bigger or what? I mean, kind of, except for the fact that I'm playing against an international team on an international rink. But this camera is really zoomed out. You want to have a zoomed out camera, but this might be just taking it too far. A zoomed out camera means you can see everything that's happening on the ice anywhere you are. The problem with overhead, though, is you can lose focus pretty easily as it kind of just feels like a bunch of ants that are skating around. Let me show you that example where auto zoom was turned off with the overhead camera. Here I'm going to take the puck away from my opponent, and I'm just so far at the top of the screen, it just takes too long to see what's ahead of me. That's why I didn't like it too much. Zone is the camera that I use is just tilted downward a little bit just so that it's still zoomed out. You still can see a whole lot, but I think it just makes for a more immersive experience. Now you see that black bar on the bottom that now shows a bunch of text. That means you didn't calibrate your screen. You do that in the calibration section so that the scoreboard is all the way on the bottom. Classics, your third best option for cameras where it's zoomed out a little bit, but also not too far so that you can still kind of feel that you're in the game. Now, everybody's different. Everyone has a different setup. Whether you're playing on a TV or a monitor, how far away you're sitting from your screen, it all comes into play with these visual settings. So don't just take my word for it. Try it out yourself, but definitely try to use one of these three cameras. The next closest one to those three would probably be Dynamic High. It's zoomed out, but it also moves the camera around depending on what part of the ice you're at. Dynamic cameras are cool, but they're not very good, at least not competitively, because with how much the camera moves around your left stick motions, your right stick motions, they may not be exactly what you want them to be. Camera might be rotated a little bit, so you're going to end up uh, maybe pulling your right stick back too much and take a slap shot instead of stick handle. That's just my experience with it. Maybe if you get used to it, uh, well, all the power to you. Dynamic medium takes a step down from that, tilts the camera downward a little bit, keeps it dynamic, looks cool again. Looks like a casual like franchise mode or season mode or playing with your friends to me. 
dynamic low even further down and you can kind of see what I'm talking about here where I can't even see the right side of the screen I don't know who's pushing up with me you don't want to be playing with cameras like these ice is uh, surprisingly decent Nope, I didn't say ice is surprisingly decent not an ISIS supporter, just wanted to throw that out there. It's another good zoomed out camera, probably better than classic now that I think about it, but we're already beyond that point, so it's okay. It still cuts out some of the edges, some of the corners. Overall, it looks a lot like the zone camera, except the zone camera is tilted downward a bit, which means it'll allow you to see a little bit further up not a bad camera angle and action this is your standard be a pro camera that makes it feel like you're actually playing the game maybe less with a controller and more with your mind sure you can see really far up there you can see what the goalie's doing right off the opening face off but what's happening behind you and then when you're really far up there you're wondering where is the puck as a bunch of canadian players are blocking your screen for a truly authentic experience, we have the broadcast camera. Playing left to right, it's like you're sitting in the seats or you're watching this game on television, though before those times where they learned they could turn the camera to get slightly different angles. Definitely a fun camera to play with with your friends or being in coach mode, not controlling any of the teams and just seeing the game differently. For a truer authentic experience, we have the true broadcast camera. This is where the camera turns with you and definitely looks more realistic. I recommend the other one for coach mode. Well, I'm going to recommend this one even more because it's just it's just a different way to look at the game. Seeing all these plays, all these goals, all these big hits from this point of view makes it really awesome. Wonder what would happen if we had like a major tournament played on this setting not only would it be more interesting to watch but would we still have the same top players i don't know maybe ea needs to do like a competitive seasons where people are locked onto this camera setting finally there are these two settings in the game settings offline that i didn't talk about during the normal course of the game the computer automatically makes line changes for you that is substitutes your players in and out so that you can have fresh skaters on the ice you can turn that off if you so choose by setting this to manual the away shot aim, assuming that you're the away team, if you're the home team, then the, the other section would be available to you. With aim assist means that whenever you take a shot, the game will automatically choose the best place to aim, which usually means a goal. If you want to show your friends how cool you are, you turn that on and you'll be scoring on most of the shots that you take. However, if you have that on for whatever reason right now, if you want to get better at the game, you want this turned off. You want it set to manual. You want to be able to choose where you aim. Being in control of your actions is the only way that you're going to be better. For all you guys playing online, don't worry about this because it's automatically set to manual. The game's not going to choose where you should shoot. But yeah, that's another reason too. If you're going to go to online, well, you better be prepared to have this already be off by default. With that said, that's the video on the best settings, both visual and controller. I hope these settings will help you guys have the advantage that you need, or maybe not even need, but just giving you an advantage against your opponent. If you guys have any questions about these settings, let me know in the comments, and I would be happy to help.